It's knockout week on professional MasterChef. And these chefs are fighting to stay in the competition. Last time. Let's go, let's go. Talk to us, talk to us. The first group of five triumphed. And all of them went through. Now, the second group of professionals will be stepping up to the plate. They are going to need to show us their skill, their technique, and attention to detail. Come on, boys, keep up. At the end, only the best chefs can go through to the semi-finals. I feel as though like it has to be all or nothing, or you know, you're going to go home. I've done really well to get this far, but I think I've got a little bit more in me to take me over to the next stage. For me to stand, it means someone's got to go home, so hopefully it won't be me. Today, nothing but the best is going to be good enough. Chefs, welcome to Lords, the home of cricket. So far in the competition, you've worked brilliantly as individuals. But today, Monica and I want to see how you work together as a team. We would like you to cook a three-course fine dining dinner for ex-England cricket captain Mike Getting and four of his guests. Now here comes the tricky bit. You're going to be serving the meal here in the pavilion, but you're going to be cooking it over there. So I suggest you get a move on. Off you go. You can't help but walk into this stadium, this view, and think, wow, we are honoured to be here. I want them to knock that dinner for six, right out into the boundaries. I hope they do it. I've never been here before, and it's, it's fantastic. It's such a amazing place to be, you know, what a great way to spend the day. It's a beautiful venue, some good chefs in there, so we're going to come together as a team and hopefully deliver. The chefs now have 30 minutes to plan their lunch menu. They've been given mackerel, rabbit, apples and pears, a range of vegetables and herbs and spices. Okay, cool. Starters. What is the option? Macro. What about a nice mackerel? Yeah. yeah. What else are uh, the garnishes? Sure. I, think, I think these are amazing. I oh, right, the radishes, these, yeah, yeah, radishes these, are standard. Yeah, like Please be Please, sure. Yes. I think we're just going to work together. I think basically that's the, that's, the, that's the idea of the task. So we've kind of decided that we're going to take it in different teams, but uh, we've, we're all going to decide the ingredients that we're using and the, the, the dishes we're going to do before we, we do that. What about a uh, saddle of rabbit? Taking the rabbits, boning the saddles out, yeah. stuffing it. Leg confit? I wouldn't okay, mess about with confits because it's make sure it's cooked in time and you've got to get it over as well. Something a little bit different, working together as a team is something we've not done yet, so I think it's going to create a little bit more pressure, certainly bring out a little bit of friction as well, because everyone's going to want to do their own ideas. Calvados and apple sorbet, or are we doing a sorbet? going to do a granite. We have five chefs, and everyone has five directions, maybe, but we need to put our heads together, work on the common goal. So who's going to do what, do you reckon? So me and I'm quite happy doing me, main course yeah, with someone. Me and Danilo will do the starters. Yeah. You go through the mains, and then we'll all help. Uh... Yeah, we'll just laugh at Scott and the crap on his ass. <laughs> Chefs, can you just give us a bit of a, an insight as to where you're at? So, starters, we've got Mark and Danilo, Gavin and Bobby on the main course. I'm going to start the desserts. Starter is? We're going to do a makery salad. Yeah. We're going to use a pea puree with basil, which I love it. We're going to use some pickled beaches, uh, broad beans as well. Tell me about your main course. Uh, so main course, we're going to take the rabbit, we're going to take the saddle off, and we're going to fill it with the, uh, the black pudding mousseline. The legs we're going to put into a pressure cooker and pick it down through some white beans, some butter beans. Okay. Um, almost sort of rustic. Like a ragu? Um, yeah, like a ragu, yeah. And then is that? This building's seeped in English history, so apple yeah. crumble for me 
is one of the best British desserts there is. So I'd feel quite confident serving them that. Okay. Apple crumble. A take on a an take apple crumble, okay. yeah. Listen, guys, I'm hearing your menu, but I'm not hearing anything that's shouting out wow. I'd like you to stretch your imaginations. I'd like you to really bounce some ideas off each other and, and come up with a stunning meal. Maybe something you've not done before. With only two hours until the mackerel starter is served, Mark and Danilo are contemplating the judge's advice. We have to play a little bit with ingredients. So I'll tell you what, we can do red pasta with the beetroot. Do, we do. do a beetroot like tortellini or something? Yeah, I don't know if we have to fill the tortellini with beetroot as well, but the pasta should be pink. Having decided to make pink pasta, Danilo gets on with filleting the mackerel, while Mark starts prepping the veg. I love mackerel, it's one of my favourite things, and, and, and ravioli from an Italian chef as well, you can't go wrong, can you really? Guys, how are we doing? Yeah, good chef, yeah. Have we uh, developed, growing the menu? I heard you mention some pasta earlier. Yeah, yeah, we're going to do some beetroot ravioli. Yep. Yeah. Classic pasta with the beetroot puree inside. Um, you well, said you wanted to colour like a light pink yeah. colour pasta, didn't you? Pink. Pink, yeah. Like a light, uh, sort of. Yeah, but put in the beetroot inside as well. We might need to go with pink. regular pasta. No. No, no pink, then. No pink. No pink. Yeah. But, hey, listen, it's your call, OK? Don't be swayed by me. All I'm doing is asking you questions. Thank you. Thank you, Chef. Over on the main course, Bobby and Gavin are also trying to elevate their rabbit cassoulet. Prune puree and morals. Are you going to put some of the um, curry spice in yeah, there as well? Yeah, yeah, I think I'll do that way the beans too. Yeah. A bit of Asian touch. No worries. I'm sort of hopefully a traditional English cook. Bobby in the last round used a lot of uh, sort of his home country flares, which was great, you know, and he got commended on it. So, you know, let's put the two together and see what happens. He's got some ideas for the prune puree, giving it a little bit of spice to it, which would be nice. So, yeah, it should be good. Yeah, With pressure to lift their original ideas to fine dining standard, Scott runs his apple crumble dessert idea by the rest of the team. We're looking at a caramel panna cotta with a calvados and apple granitang. Caramel panna Gonna make an almond twill and like a little vanilla crumble, so it's a bit like an apple caramel crumble. Sounds lovely. Yeah? That's cool. Scott, how are we doing with the desserts? Yeah, not too bad. I'm making my vanilla crumble now. I'm going to chop some roasted almonds uh, to go through that, just to give it a little bit more of a texture. Right. And that's it. Where does the panna cotta come into this? Panna cotta, I just wanted to sort of modernise it a little bit with the caramel. So that's why I give it a little bit of creaminess as well, because we haven't got... I'm not making a custard to go with a crumble, so the caramel panna cotta will give it that sort of custardy right. taste. So even though visually it looks nothing like a crumble, it's going to have on the palate the crumble exactly, flavour. Yeah. Exactly. If we've got time, I might like make a little bit of apple puree as well, uh, just to dot on the plate. Scott is very much working alone. His take on a apple crumble. I just hope that Scott has consulted Danilo when it comes to the making of panna cottas. Because for me, he's the master chef of panna cotta making so far in the competition. Thirty minutes have gone, and all three courses are well underway. I need to show one of you uh, what we're going to plate up the food. So whoever can come I'll over across now, yeah, I'll take you over. Yeah, please, yeah. All right. The logistics of the dinner today is the journey from the kitchen here all the way over there to the pavilion. Into the lift. I believe they need to do as much as they possibly can in the kitchen over here, get it down to the point of service, transport it over and just finish it off over there. So in here, the food's going to go in here. The hot boxes here, and then they're going to drive you down to the other end. I'll show you the kitchen up the other end. It's never going to be easy for our chefs. So a bit quicker, guys. Yeah. They're going to have to really work hard as a team to get it from A to B. Come on, boys, keep up. Coming through here. 
and this is the kitchen, OK? Uh, OK. Oh, cool. So you've got everything here. There's ovens there. You might want to think if you need the ovens, if yeah. you need them on at a certain temperature or something. Yeah. If there's, uh, if you have a look, see if there's stuff to, places to put the plates. But just be aware that, you know, if you need to set stuff up here, you're going to need a good few minutes, you know, to get yeah. up here, you know, 10, 15 10 minutes, minutes, yeah, so 10 minutes before. Yeah. All right, I mean, you get back and help your, the other guys. Back in the main kitchen, Scott's asked Gavin for his panna cotta recipe. I did 400 before, 400 so I put two, 200, 200, 200 milk, 200 cream. double cream. And one and a half leaves? Yeah, but Marcus said that it was too light, it's more like a blancmange. Right. So maybe go three leaves on that. Obviously all the elements on my dish I need to make sure I now, so the panna cotta needs to set, not too hard as well and the granite needs to get frozen down. The twill could go completely wrong as well, but yeah, it should be all right, it should be all right. Over on mains, Gavin's almost finished prepping the rabbit saddle. Uh, just stuffing the rabbit now with the black pudding. He's also roasting the bones to make the sauce and pressure cooking the legs to shred through the white bean cassoulet. The main concern is that the rabbit's roasted right uh, and rested well, because if, if it doesn't rest well, it's, it's going to open up and it'll be a nightmare. It just won't look very pretty on a plate. Um, Bobby's made an excellent puree for the, um, to go with it, give it a little bit of sweetness. So I think we're looking good. I hope. Where's my wingman? Bobby? Yep. We're looking good, yeah? Yeah, we're looking good. Yeah. <laughs> he says it's got to be right. Chefs, you have just one hour left before Mark and Danilo, the starters, are ready. Should I be worried that you're still filleting the mackerel? No. Come on, let's go, let's go, let's go. Lord's Cricket Ground was founded by Thomas Lord, a cricketer and businessman in 1755 and is regarded as the home of cricket. This site in London St John's Wood is actually its third, with a stadium that seats nearly 30,000. It's also the home of the MCC, the world's most famous club and guardians of the laws of the game. Last year, the venue celebrated its 200th anniversary. We have fine dining at Lord's every day of the year. If you ask any player in the world where the best catering is, it's Lord's, number one. Well, we are behind schedule, so we need to push it. With only 35 minutes till service, Danilo's still working on the pickling liquor for the mackerel. Then we have to start to do the ravioli and then finish all the garnish. And then get over there and plate it. Gavin, Bobby, chef. how are we doing? Are you pushing on, Chef? Yeah, you're on the turn yeah. there. Good. What's the garnish for the rabbit dish? So we're going to do the butter beans. Um, we're going to flake the leg through it as well, keep it almost ragu, cachalage. So it's going to be quite rustic, quite earthy. It's finished with a lovely sweet puree just to sweeten the dish. Wow. I'd like to see an amazing rabbit dish here. I've had many a fantastic rabbit dish on, on MasterChef, you know. What's going to be outstanding about your, your dish? Uh, hopefully the flavours, the flavours themselves, are, they're beautiful. Hopefully they're not confusing either, so... No, well, it sounds, sounds pretty straightforward. Yeah. yeah. Hopefully you've not played it too safe. No. 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 Oh, we'll wait we'll and see then. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. But the real pressure is on the starter. Danilo's on the pasta, but he still has to fill and shape the tortellini. Danilo, we need to start thinking about making a move soon, mate. We've got like 25 minutes. Oh, really? Yeah, about that, yeah. Before we need to walk over. You sure? Yeah. The time is also catching up with Gavin and Bobby. The rabbit saddles have come out of the water bath, but now need to be pan-fried. 
we need to start thinking about roasting and resting and stuff now, otherwise 20 minutes we're going to be in it and we're not going to be ready. So, you know, time's catching up pretty quick. Gavin needs to be very careful of his timing when it comes to cooking this meat. There is no fat, there is nothing there to protect the meat at all. He really has to be very, very delicate. Mark, what are you doing now? Uh, just getting everything ready uh, to take over to get it started. For I'm going to get a boiling pan of water on for the ravioli, and then I'll come back, and then we'll, me and Dylan will both so run. So you're going to set up the kitchen, yeah. get it ready, and then come and then back. Come back. And then help Grab Danilo, yeah. and off you go. Yeah. Cool. Brilliant. Over in the pavilion, the guests have started to arrive. I'm very hungry. I've had two little bits of toast this morning, expectation of what's to come today. And having had lunch up here for about 30 odd years, I'm really looking forward to this and the boys have got some high standards to actually uh, get up to. Oh, I think it's an integral part of any cricketer's life actually. It's the only, well when you play a test match, it's the only sport probably that feeds you so much. So uh, yeah, I hope it's just something a bit different, um, something that you wouldn't normally uh, maybe pick off a menu. We're expecting a, a royal battle, I suppose, in, in the kitchen um, that is worthy of an Ashes battle. And uh, we're really looking forward to it. If I have time to make enough, I'll do four. Danilo has finally started to fill the tortellini, while Mark is trying to get the finishing kitchen set up. I've done plenty of outside catering before, but not in a time frame. Not with Marcus and Monica watching. I might need help closing this. Do you need a shove with it and raviolis? Yes, please. OK, if you want to do the filling to, to all, it's here. Be careful, it's running. Oh. And the other one with the, with the brush, yeah. gently on the, okay. on the corner. but just tiny, tiny bit of water. Yeah. There's a bit too much water on them, guys. Well, it's okay, I can close them. Yeah? Yeah, yeah, thank you, guys. Danilo. Yes? Would you rather just do it on your own? No, chef, I can't say that. You would, wouldn't you? It's pasta, and I kind of feel it. More, more weight on my shoulder because it's pasta and I want to look nice. I appreciate the help. Thank you very much. Don't know how you do. Good, good. Yeah. Tortellini are ready. They're ready, brilliant. Yeah. Right, guys, just double check everything. Make sure you've got everything before you leave this kitchen because yeah. I'm not running back. Sure. Get your notes, check your dish. Ciao guys, see you in a bit guys. Right at the starter we've got a lightly pickled mackerel, radish, Pea puree, basil and broad beans. I quite like mackerel actually, but I'm normally used to having a bit of horseradish sauce with it. Very mm. nice. Okay, guys, chef, there's a dumb waiter over there left, or you can walk it up three flights of stairs. We're gonna walk it. You wanna walk it? Walk it, please. Okay then. You don't wanna let it go. I'm interested to see what, how it's plated um, in terms of look and colours, because there's some there's some good ingredients there. Well, here's to lunch, and uh, to lunch. may it be a good one. Cheers. 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 Right, chefs, you've got ten minutes left. Perfect. So you got time. Get Love yourselves organised. Yeah. Sure.
Chefs, you've got just over three minutes. Yep. Thank you, yes, Chef. Thank you. How are we going? Looking good, Chef. Yeah. What else is going on the plate? Pea shoots, orange flowers, some radishes. Okay. Looking good, guys. Yes, Chef. Thank you. Happy. Thank you very much. Glad that's over. <laughs> I really enjoyed that, actually. Yes. Right, we're clear down because your yep. collies, collies are going to be coming over any minute now. Yes, sure. Not having worked with Danilo before and just to cook a dish like that, I think we should both be really proud. I think they're going to be happy. I mean, it's a simple dish, it's a easy dish, but it's all about the, the flavour. The flavour's good, <laughs> yeah, the flavour was really good. The lightly pickled mackerel is served with beetroot tortellini, a pea and basil puree radish, and garnished with broad beans, toasted pine nuts, and borage flowers. Beautiful. Yeah, stunning. Mm. Absolutely. Stunning dish. Mackerel can be very fishy, but actually that lightly pickled is just taking out the sort of fishiness, and with the beetroot as well, the beetroot really does give it, sets the flavour off, and I like it. No, I, I agree with Mike. I think the presentation's fantastic. Balance of the different flavours uh, and the colours, really good. So, uh, yeah, good start. I love this dish. I love mackerel. So it's, it was really spectacular. It, it's all good. It all complements each other. Really delicate. It's tasty. It's light and uh, befitting of a sunny afternoon at Lord's, I think. Mm. What a great effort. It looks lovely. Uh, the garnish is very light. I'm really pleased that Mark and Danilo decided to put the little tortellinis with the beetroot. The pea puree is great. They've done a good job. You need to start thinking about heading yeah. over in about 10 minutes. Please, we'll tell you when. Everything pretty much yeah. is going to be ready, huh? Yeah. Despite time running out, Bobby and Gavin have decided to make some last-minute additions to their dish. Uh, it's going to make some little parcels with the leftover rabbit leg. It's got a little bit of um, mustard in it, a little bit of olives in it. Um, yeah, last sort of finishing touch, really. Bobby, have we got any, like, Go on. mustard seeds or something we can sprinkle yeah, over? There's, there's, there's mustard seeds, yeah. yeah. We're getting down to the last 10 minutes. All of a sudden, there's a lot of extra elements coming into this rabbit dish. Uh, Gavin has wanted to, to cook some of the meat and the pastilla. We've got fresh pears that are going into it. Olives are being included into the leg meat as well, which wasn't originally there. Maybe that's what's missing to really lift this dish up. I hope so, but I also hope it's not a rush of oxygen to the brain. Bobby, Gavin, are we ready? Hey, Chef. OK, let's go. Yeah, wait. So for main course, we've got stuffed saddle of rabbit, a black pudding, prunes, butter beans and morels. I'll get the lift. Thank you. For me, that's a really kind of complicated um, set of ingredients uh, that I would never think of combining. Let's go. Straight into the car. I'm not sure we've ever served rabbit at Lord's uh, in one of our events before, so really looking forward to, uh, to that. I always leave the black pudding when I'm having breakfast, so hopefully I won't leave it today. Morels and butter beans and prunes. Well, I hope I'm not rushing for the toilet. <laughs> oh, oh, you can't say that! What's in the oven? The final Filo soup. pastry with some of the leg to it. We put some chopped olives, some chopped capers. Where's that come from? Um, just the last minute thing we thought of it, we, it lacked a texture on the plate. I see some livers as well now. Um, yeah, we've got some kidneys and livers as well, just a little bit of the offal, we'll use the whole of the rabbit. And um, what's this? A little bit of pear. pear well, just, all, all these things have just come, I've only been missing 10 minutes. Yeah, just said just now, this is Bobby's world. I'm, I'm new to it, so I'm, uh, I'm along for the ride, but enjoy it. Bobby's world.
Are you both happy with how the rabbit looks? Yes, chef. Right, chefs, your customers are now waiting. Good. Nice. I like that. Queen Puree's lovely, mate. Yeah. yeah, it was good. Enjoyed it. You know, simple, rustic, but with a slight refinement, which is what we wanted. All chef is different personality, but end of the day, you work as a team. It's not about me or it's not about Gavin. It's working together. The saddle of rabbit is stuffed with black pudding and served on a white bean cassoulet with rabbit liver and kidney, a phyllo parcel stuffed with rabbit leg, olives and caper, a rabbit sauce and a spiced prune puree. It's topped with carrots, morels and fresh pears. I think it's the polar opposite of the starter really, mm. which was sort of so neat and, and vibrant and fresh looking. This, this for me is quite a heavy looking meal and a little bit beige but happy to, be, uh, to have that opinion changed by the taste. It's almost a bit like a stew. There's a carrots in there, there's a little bit of kidney, a little bit of liver. The black pudding, I think, actually goes really nicely with the, with the rabbit. I've quite enjoyed it. I think what this is, is, it's like a kind of French rabbit cassoulet, definitely. And I think that's probably what they're trying to achieve. So for them to put all these ingredients together and achieve that is quite an, quite an incredible effort. It's very filling, um, but I'm managing to get through it well. A bit more green in there for me would have been nice, but no, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's certainly an adventure. It looks confused. It looks amateur. When you add all these other things onto a dish, you then need to think about how am I going to put this on the plate. I think there's just too many ideas and it hasn't come together. OK, for dessert, we've got caramel panna cotta, apple granita, almond twill, vanilla crumble and thyme, and compressed apples. <sighs> so, uh, there's a lot going on there. I've kept it quite simple. I just hope they all like it. This is, this is intriguing, because I actually... One, one thing I do like is a good apple crumble. But there's other things that seem to be in this, and I am very intrigued to find out um, exactly how it comes out. There's so much on the plate, it's such an amazing array of ingredients and flavours that the presentation, I reckon, is going to be impressive. My recipe, so that better be good. Scott, are you happy? Yeah, I'm fairly happy, Chef, yeah. Why fairly? Mm. Um, What's not quite right? Maybe the panna cotta's a little bit set, but the proof is in the taste, I guess. Did you, um, just by any chance, consult with uh, your Italian colleague? I didn't know we'd done a brilliant panna cotta in the rounds before, so uh, yeah, I was a bit late on that one. Well, he's Italian. <laughs> And ready to go like this? Yeah, that's ready to go, yeah. OK. It's difficult to come up with recipes for pastry off the top of your head, um, so hopefully, it's, fingers crossed, it's all right for them. The dessert is a modern take on an apple crumble. It's a caramel panna cotta with a vanilla crumble, calvados and apple granita an apple puree, thyme-infused compressed apples, and an almond twill. Very disappointing. Oh. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I don't know what to expect, but I didn't expect that. It might taste very nice, though. I think it's quite tasty, but I, I didn't like the presentation very much. Some of those tastes coming through are, are really quite nice, but when you put it all together in one mouthful, somehow it doesn't quite work out for me. I thought it was a bit of a letdown, which is a shame, because 
I love puddings. I've got a sweet tooth. And it's the thing I most look forward to in a, in a meal. For me, sadly, cheese and biscuits, time. Cheese and, biscuits and maybe next time. <laughs> the dessert for me on the whole hasn't worked because the panna cotta is too set. It, it should be just melting ever so gently, but it's not. There's too much gelatin in this panna cotta. One of the things I wanted to taste from this dish was a crumble. And I'm, I'm really not getting the idea here. I have to say, uh, when we looked at the menu, we were all very excited. Some of us hadn't had rabbit before, and we were all very intrigued about the dessert. And can I say, when the starter came out, we thought, my goodness, this is very special. When we got to the main course, the black pudding and the rabbit went very nicely together. And I suppose at the end of the meal, the panna cotta was lovely, the crumble was nice, but we just didn't feel that it, it sort of went together. Having said that, I had a clean plate, so thank you very much indeed. Very thank fine. You. Thank you. Cheers. Thank you. End of a long day, and boy, it's been a tough one. How are you doing? Too well. <laughs> Today's been a real experience, you know, completely out of our comfort zones logistical nightmare but you know we managed to uh, pull it off which we're, I'm really happy with. Of course you want them to, to give you really good feedback on your food. Um, I'm glad they like the panna cotta which is the main element to the dish. Tomorrow back to your own battlefield or uh, don't fight against each other um, but that's a competition. Huh? We've had some fabulous dishes from these chefs. We didn't quite get that today. I hope we can get it back in the MasterChef kitchen though. You cooked as a team at Lord's, but today you have to cook as an individual again to make for us one outstanding showstopper of the dish. This is for a place in the semi-finals and we can only take the best chefs through. 90 minutes, off you go. Scott's an interesting chef, and throughout his cooking in the competition, he's always had a surprise factor, which we both enjoy. I like the different ideas that Scott brings to the kitchen. I hope today he does that again, because when he does it, he does it so well. Yeah, the competition completely takes over your life. Um, I've not seen my daughter for, for days on end. I've not had, had days off for, for quite a few weeks now, so... Yeah, it's taken its toll on me, but hopefully I've still got a little bit of uh, steam left in me to carry on going. How are you doing, Scott? Yeah, very well, thank you. You're now fighting for a place in the, uh, in the semi-finals. I am. Um, what does that mean to you? Um, it just means that I've got to give it an extra 10%, I guess. Um, I really believe in this dish. I just really hope you guys enjoy it. What are you cooking for us? I'm cooking salt marsh lamb with a Caesar dressing, comfy new seasoned garlic, sourdough croutons, and I'm going to sell some fresh anchovies. The question is, does a Caesar flavour of the fish in the Caesar dressing work with the salt marsh lamb? For me, I like that combination, and I think it works, so. We'll soon see, won't we? We'll soon see. OK. Thanks, Scott. Cheers. Scott is cooking his salt marsh rack of lamb. He wants to do it the classic way. Render the fat down in the pan and finish the lamb in the oven. It's always nice to see a chef who still believes in those classical roots and cooking of meat the old fashioned way. I just hope it's well executed and it is as good as Scott believes it to be.
Mark, when he cooks his food, can be very bald, and when he gets it right, it's stunning. I do like big bold flavours. Maybe it was too much in the last round with my sauce. It was a little bit too much for the delicate venison, which I should have known. But this, I'm going to learn from that, and hopefully I'll do a sauce that Marcus will, uh, will really enjoy. Mark, you glad to be back in the kitchen? Yeah, really excited today. Really looking forward to this challenge, yeah. And what's the dish? It's a uh, braised shore rib. I'm doing that with a salt baked celeriac, a smoked bone marrow, and uh, a piece, piece of seared fillet with a gentleman's relish. Every time I serve it to my friends and family, they, they, you know, they always come back for more. So, yeah. Well, you know what's at risk here. Yeah, it's a place in the semi-final. If I could pr produce the dish that I want to produce today and make you guys happy, then I'm, I'm be over the moon. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Mark is cooking beef two different ways. He's using the short rib, which is braising, and then the fillet of beef, which is going to be put into a sous vide bag, poaching in the water bath and finishing in the pan. Mark is also serving his dish with a gentleman's relish, which is prunes with anchovies and a selection of spices. This is a very old English style of relish, which I've never had, so I'm really excited to try this but it cannot have a sauce that overpowers all those beautiful flavours that he's putting on the plate. I want to taste them all. Guys, there's 40 minutes left. Danilo is a fabulous chef. He has this amazing ability to bring his Italian flavours with the Danilo modern twist. And I think he does it very, very well. Danilo, what is your showstopper dish for us? I'm going to do a mackerel again, uh, but I'm going to present it in two ways. One is in a balsamic vinegar marinade, and the other one is just pickle. And I'm going to serve it with tortellini, filled with tomato and aubergine puree, with a fondue make of smoked buffalo mozzarella. Smoked buffalo mozzarella yeah. fondue. Are you confident in your dish today? I'm never confident about myself. No, you're not. Yeah, I know. You have to be. I know. You, you've come so far in the competition, Danilo, and because I, I, you're I'm cooking happy, well. I'm happy with what, I, what I've done up until now. But, you know, it's just, just me. Danilo's doing the mackerel two different ways. He's also adding smoked mozzarella as a fondue. That's really interesting because I'm quite surprised as to how a fondue, a warm melted cheese, is going to sit with this particular dish. If you ask my mother about cooking fish with cheese, she's going to tell me that I'm crazy, but it's, not, it's starting to be a bit more common, especially in chefs. But you need to get the balance right. Bobby's food is so interesting, it's intriguing, it draws my attention. And when it works well, goodness me, the flavours that this chef achieves on a plate of food has been stunning. If you want to be in a competition, you have to be competitive. You have to show you are better than the best. Only the best win. Bobby, you cooked some fabulous food through the competition, some great flavours, and you've taken that amazing Indian cuisine uh, and dressed it beautifully well on the plate. Are we going to get that again today? Yes, Chef. What are you doing, then? OK, the title of the dish I want to call it. It's uh, English Beef by an Indian Chef. English Beef by an Indian Chef? Yeah. Is that what you call the dish? <laughs> it's just an ingredient. The rest, everything is... Explain it to me. Uh, there's English Beef Filet. OK, it's been slowly cooked, and then I finish it on the pan. Then there's a shin of beef that'll be rolled, rolled in a pancake. Uh, dosa, we call it. And the langoustine. So this is your take on a surf and turf almost? Yes. And, and what have you got here? What is the stock that you have? And that is a broth, actually, that gives to start up your palate. When you drink it, you need to feel that freshness or the flavours. Crack on, Bob. Thanks, sir. Bobby has the fillet which he's cooking in the water bath. He's then going to pan fry it. He's also got some braised beef that he's put into the pressure cooker with onions and spices and herbs. And he's going to be putting that into a semolina pancake. Bobby is also making a broth 
a lot of spices in there, the langoustine shells and, and pretty much everything else on the table. There's so much going in this dish. For me, it's another one of those prizes where I have to wait and see what the eating is like. Gavin has got a huge amount of experience and we've seen some fabulous food from him. But now and then he tends to play it very safe, almost to just get it through. Today, safe is not going to be enough. We want to see that fire back in Gavin that shows he means business and he's here to win it. What is your dish? Um, so I'm going to use salt marsh lamb um, with some sweetbreads, some lovely comfy potatoes. I've charred and then braised some gem lettuce. It, it sounds very classical. You know, listening to the other dishes, the guys have been adventurous, but I've always said through the competition, I want to remember a plate of good food as opposed to a, a plate of mumbled food that doesn't quite work. Best Sorry. of luck. Thank right. you. Thanks very much. There's nothing wrong with classical combination. We love fondants, we love baby gem lettuce, we love a good lamb sauce, we like lamb and we love sweetbreads. But there are so many other good dishes in this kitchen at the moment. I don't think he's really pushing the boundaries here. Everything on this dish has got to be spot on. They know the difference between an over elaborate plate or a plate of good food that's been cooked to a very high standard. Sometimes you can go too far and if, if you do go too far, you can mess it all up. It's knowing when to cut back and just sort of put the reins on a little bit. Chefs, you've got five minutes left. Yes, Chef. Feeling a bit tight. Some amazing aromas starting to come from this kitchen. We are going to be challenged against who's going to go through to the semi-final round. The kitchen is heating up now. Can't wait to get eating. Bobby, are you going to start plating soon? Yes, sir. I hope so. Down to a couple of minutes. That is it, time's up. I enjoyed that. <laughs> How'd you go on, mate? Mate, I really struggled today. I was flustered. First up is Scott, who has made roast rack of lamb with breaded sweetbreads, served with a Caesar dressing, sourdough, new season garlic, anchovy, and a lamb sauce. Uh, Scott, lamb with garlic, sweetbreads, what could go wrong? Oh, I know, let's add a Caesar dressing into it. You know, what is the chef thinking? But I think you've done yourself a, a great dish because it's so well balanced. It's got the saltiness, the right amount of pickling, and then you've got the sweetness of the, the shallots as well. I love the combination of the little salad on the side with the sweet bread. It's, it's fresh, it's light, the croutons work very well. And I'm really pleased that you've actually been brave enough to cook a rack of lamb the classic way. And for me, the, the anchovy lifts this dish uh, and gives it some real bite and energy and tang and zestiness. Um, it's a lovely plate of food. Great Thank job. Well done, Scott. Thank you. Yeah, feeling good after that. Um, it's always nice when the judges like your food or like your dish. So yeah, that's exactly how I wanted it to go. Well done, Scott. Mark's showstopper is braised short rib of beef and seared fillet of beef with a smoked bone marrow, served with salt-baked celeriac, celeriac puree and buttered turnip tops, crispy shallots 
and a gentleman's relish. Mark, the celeriac puree is so, so smooth. It's incredible. Mm. It is velvety, it is creamy, and ever so light. The cooking of the short rib is just falling apart. It's lovely. Now, the issue I have with this plate of food is it lacks in seasoning to the point it's almost bland for me. The gentleman's relish is really lovely, and I'm quite upset there's not more of it on the plate. This is the flavour that is missing. I thought it was quite strong, so I thought it would just be a good balance in smaller dots. But there's a dot on here, Mark. <laughs> sure. This is the wow factor that is not evident in your, in your dish. Monica summed this dish up 100% correct. It lacks flavour, it lacks seasoning. But there are good points. The, the celeriac is smooth. The beef is beautifully cooked. The bone marrow is fantastically presented. But at this stage of the competition, we are looking for the chef who understands all aspects of the plate of food and maximises in every area, but brings the dish together as one. Yeah. And I think you've slightly missed on a few little points here. I was, yeah, I was quite flustered today. It wasn't one of my best days. And that's a fair point, and you've, you, you know, you've, you've owned up to that. But the question's going to be, is it good enough? Yeah, really gutted. <clears throat> really gutted. I knew I didn't have a good day today. I knew it as soon as I finished plate. Bobby's made English beef by an Indian chef. A fillet of beef on a mushroom chutney, topped with a spicy langoustine. It's served with a beef shin wrapped in a dozer on a lentil puree. And spiced bone marrow sauce. His lentil water broth has been served as a palate cleanser. Starting with the, the little broth, the, the tea, um, that for me did not bring anything to the table at all to this dish. Uh, it just tastes like a, a, a chicken stock. The beef is beautifully cooked and presented very, very well. I like the lentil uh, puree as well, but I just found that your sauce is so hot and powerful, um, it sort of ruins the beef a little bit and the long steam and the mushrooms. It's not your best dish. I love the way the beef has been cooked. However, your pancake is, is undercooked, almost on the point where it's doughy. The meat that's wrapped in it is bland. The mushroom is bland. But you have that sauce, which I love, but it takes over everything. Do I enjoy the plate as a whole? No, I don't. First time where I say I don't, and it really disappoints me because I've had such amazing plates of food from you. Uh, not a great feeling. I, uh, I could have done much better. End of the day, it's their call. It's up to them. Gavin's dish is loin of lamb, charred gem lettuce, breaded sweetbreads, onion puree, potato fondants, and pistachios. It's served with a lamb sauce. Gavin, you've cooked the lamb wonderfully. The fondants are just melting. They've been cooked perfectly. The sweetbread, it looks like there's a lot of breadcrumbs on there, but it's actually still quite moist. The whole dish has, has come together the way it should. But there's nothing here that's screaming out, wow, showstopper. I just find now, at this level, you've got to come here and knock us out with a dish that we're not expecting. Yes, the lamb is beautifully cooked, so are the sweetbreads, but the sauce for me lacks lamb fat. And I think the dish lacks the flavour of lamb 
and I just find it just a little bit below par, below your par. And I'm a bit confused because you're cooking for a place in the semi-final. Yet, I think deep down inside you, you know that you can do better than this. Yeah, sure. Mark is saying it was an average dish. It's, I think it was a little bit tough to take. Maybe he's an old boy. I haven't got enough new tricks, so I don't know. Finally, Danilo has made pickled mackerel and a balsamic marinated and pan-fried mackerel served with aubergine and tomato tortellini, basil pesto and a smoked buffalo mozzarella fondue. Danilo, a very interesting plate of food. A very unusual thing to put the cheese with this dish. Um, the cheese sauce, nevertheless, is an absolute delight. It's delicious flavour and a lovely hint of the smokiness coming through. And does work very, very well with this dish. If anything, I thought you had been not so generous with the sauce. It's sort of, you almost need to pour all of this into here. Uh, and sort of just lap the whole thing up. I was, I was a bit scared because I was just just trying to be careful Bounce. with the amount. Yeah. This is very clever. I like that you push the boundaries with your Italian cooking, Danilo. You know, it's not just a bowl of pasta. It's not your typical macro dish. And, and you, you're taking it to, to another level. And I'm really enjoying the way that your cooking is going. Mm. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I'm quite happy with what I've done. Uh, I can tell you I'm more relaxed now. It's not going to last longer, but I'm relaxed. Chefs, a very interesting day. So thank you for that. We know it's not easy. It's going to make for a difficult judging, for sure, because we will only take the best chefs through. Go and have a well-deserved break. We'll see you back here in a while. That was one tough showstop around for our chefs. Some highs and some lows here today. They want this. There's no doubt mm. about it. They do want this. Great cooking from Scott today. The salt marsh lamb, the sweet bread, the sauce, they'd all worked beautifully well. And I thought it was incredibly clever to bring the Caesar dressing, the fresh anchovies to the dish. He cooked us a wonderful lamb dish and added Scott twist into it. This is what we want to see from our chefs. Danilo put his own twist into uh, classic Italian ingredients and that was to add a smoked mozzarella sauce to his dish today. I thought it was a risk that he took but it worked. Good dish. Mark cooked us the, the beef dish, the short rib which was cooked down, it was falling apart and um, he had gone through the whole effort of making this gentleman's relish and it would have really lifted this plate of food. Why did Mark not have the confidence to put more on the plate? He was just a little bit unsure of how far he should push himself. He really needs to get that bit of his cookery together. I mean, I'd love to be a semi-finalist. It's, it's all I've been thinking about. It's all I've been working for. But, you know, I, I wouldn't be surprised if I got knocked out for that. So. Gavin is clearly a competent chef. We can see that. But the question is, is lamb, fondant potato and braised gem lettuce enough? The dish did taste good, but did it have the wow factor? No. I think on the whole, I cook well and I've stuck to my guns. But if I'm lucky enough to stay in the competition, then yeah, I'm going to have to look at what I do for the, the next couple of dishes. So, Bobby's beef dish, I found the pancake wasn't cooked properly. It was almost doughy. The beef was cooked very well. But yet, once the sauce was added, you couldn't taste it. And that was such a shame. I push myself, but you know, it's their call. They need to feel the guy has potential. So I don't want it to think anything negative, think positive. We needed to make a decision as to who we're going to take through to the semi-finals. 
we know how tough the competition is going to get. Chefs, we've seen you cook as a team. Today you've cooked as individuals, but we can only take the best chefs through to the next round. Two of you are going to be leaving the competition today. Our first semi-finalist is... Scott. Thank you, thank you very much. Our second semi-finalist is... Danilo. Thank you. Thank you very much. And that just leaves one more place. Our last semi-finalist is... Mark. Bobby, Gavin. Thank you so much. Bit gutted, but I've enjoyed it. You know, I don't know if I said I'd have come this far. You know, down to the last ten's not bad at all, is it? So can't knock it. I was leaving the competition always a bit heartbreaking. I know my potential. Now I can build up on it, go for it and I'll try different things. Congratulations guys, you are now semi-finals. I'm lost for words, yeah, <clears throat> lost for words. I really didn't expect that. As soon as I heard that two were out, I was sure I was going to it. I thought to myself at the beginning of the competition, well, you'll be lucky if you get to critics round. And now we're in the semi-final, so... Good, bravo Danilo. Yeah, over the moon with that. Um, I've had a really good day today, I suppose. I'm definitely going to go home and have a G&T tonight. Um, well deserved one, I think. So yeah, it's been a good day. Next time, the semi-finals begin. And the chefs are pushed to their limits in some of the best restaurants in the country. So this is where it really hits, you need okay. to really knuckle down, yeah? A good solid start, I'm impressed, I'm impressed.